Yes, welcome back to the 67 Hail Hail channel on YouTube. I'm your host, Hamish Carton. Yes, I'm still in my house, as hopefully most of you are as well, as we aim to get through this tough period. Um, massively appreciate the support for the video last week. I was a little bit bowled over, in all honesty, about how many of you um, enjoyed it. We're kind of just putting together stuff at the moment to give you some sort of content. It's obviously a bit of a struggle with no studio in use. Um, we can't get together with, with the likes of John and David to chat about Celtic and of course there's no on-field issues to chat about really anyway other than a, a pretty big one in terms of where the title's going to go. I think we all know the answer to that anyway. Um, but in terms of this we're wanting to bring you a little bit more historical content and personally speaking I know a lot of the guys as well were, were pretty bowled over by some of the comments and the views we got as well so we massively appreciate it and we're going to bring you something similar today as well because with the transfer window coming up, that's one of the big things facing Celtic over the next few months. Despite all the uncertainty about what's happening with football, we have to build for next season um, or the end of this season maybe in some sort of way by bringing in some new signings. We're going to look then at the last 10 years worth of Celtic signings and more notably at the best summer signing we've made in each of the last 10 seasons. There's some pretty good names in there as you can probably guess already. We're going to go through them um, and discuss the impact they had at the club and hopefully give you a little bit of cause for optimism ahead of this summer because we do usually bring in at least one big sign in a year. So for the summer of 2019 there's obviously so many options because Neil Lennon has an eye for a player and he knew who to sign. We have the likes of Jeremy Frimpong, Hatem, Abd El Hamed, Fraser Forster as well, probably worthy of a mention even though he was only on loan. But we're going to give it to Christopher Julian who was our biggest signing of the summer. He cost £7 million from Toulouse and it's fair to say that he's gone on to repay that in abundance. He scored seven goals, a lot of them big ones for the club. You know, we talk about the cup final winner against Rangers, the last minute winner against Lazio and even a really important goal he scored at Hamilton in early February that got us um, on the road there when we were looking to struggle a bit at New Douglas Park. He scored other goals against the likes of Aberdeen and Hearts as well but he's just been a really really good piece of business Julian. Um, you know a lot of fans out there of him but other than the goals as a centre back you obviously sign him to defend and that's what he's brought us. He's brought us a real solidity. He improves um, in big games almost, his best performances have been in the Europa League, away to Ren, Lazio, away at Ibrox, almost when he's backed into a corner, that's when you get the best of him. Um, and albeit he's had a few struggles against Lyndon Dykes with Livingston, I think it's fair to say he's been a great bit of business. 2018 really can only be, you know, odds and Edward. We signed him for £9 million from PSG. When we signed him, he'd only scored 11 goals for the club. He'd had a, a first season at Celtic under Brendan Rodgers that had been decent enough, although he basically played third striker to Lee Griffiths and uh, Moussa Dembele. Um, big questions asked whether we were making the right decision forking out a record transfer fee on a player who was young and had only really produced uh, a few moments of genius against Rangers, but it's fair to say that he certainly answered those. If you want to call them critics, he certainly answered those over the last couple of years. He's an outstanding player. The thing I love about watching Edward is he improves with every game you can see him improving not just from game to game but during games as well I always use the example during the Copenhagen game away from home um, when you know he's given two one-on-one -on -one opportunities in the first 10 minutes he kind of scuffs them both the keeper comes out along the ground and blocks it so he gets a third chance albeit a little bit more time a few minutes later on and what does he do he lifts it this time he chips it over the keeper because he knows that's what the keeper does the keeper will go low and try and block it so he learns from it and that's what I love watching players players who have that quality fair enough but players who have a brain and learn from things and he's got it all he's got pace he can hold it in he can go in behind he's got a brain as I've just said he can finish he can score tap-ins he can score free kicks he's just a brilliant player and and yes, for me, he's the best striker we've had since Henrik Larsson. There, I said it. We're into 2017 and you're probably going to be able to start seeing a bit of a theme developing here because we're going for yet another French player. In the summer of 2017, just after our invincible season, Brendan Rodgers and his much vilified recruitment team actually did something that wasn't completely horrendous and they brought in Olivier and Cham for 4.5 million. Now he joined from an English team, unlike Edward and Julian, it was Manchester City, although he'd made his name basically playing on loan for Genoa in Serie A. Um, since then he's played over 100 games for Celtic, he scored 23 goals, 
The most notable one is obviously the winner against Lazio in the Stadio Olimpico. Many Celtic fans who were there that night would probably argue that he justified his 4.5 million price tag that evening alone. And I think it's fair to say, despite him still having some off games, that he's worth probably at least double, maybe even treble that 4.5 million fee at the moment. I'd certainly be a little disappointed if Celtic sold him for anything under 12 million. I think once you get over 12 million, 13, 14, 15 kind of ballpark, you're probably starting to think it may be worth moving him on, but he's a really important player for us. He's turned into a player who Neil Lennon can trust, which when you consider he wanted to move away only what, seven, eight months ago, seems pretty far-fetched. So Olivier and Champs, a thumbs up for me at our best signing of 2017. Right, 2016, you're going to see the pattern continue. I promise there's not any kind of conspiracy going on here, but we're talking about another French player. Yes, the last four years, I'm saying that the best player we've signed in each of those summer windows has been French. 2016, we did bring in Scott Sinclair that summer, Brendan Rodgers' first transfer window. Of course, Sinclair would go on to have a massive say in the, the three following seasons in the treble treble hunt. He was our top scorer in that time. But I do believe that if this player was at the club for all three years, he would have been taking home that accolade. It is, of course, Moussa Dembele. He was signed from Fulham, we paid that kind of cross-border fee, but effectively what that been a couple of hundred thousand at most. He went on to score 51 goals and 69 starts, including 7 and 8 against Rangers. We can all remember the goals at Ibrox, Hamden and of course at Celtic Park, most notably that hat-trick in his first game as well. He just knew what Celtic was about and yes, he did leave with a bit of a cloud around him um, when he went for, for £20 million pounds to Leon. Uh, I think that was the summer of 2018, but the memories he gave us and the fact we got him for, for very little money. The best striker since Larson at the time, undoubtedly, but as I've said earlier on, I think Edward just, just clips him maybe. But Dembele, take nothing away from him, a brilliant, brilliant signing. 2015 and that was the year when the wonder that is Ryan Christie came into our lives. He was signed for half a million from Inverness Cali Thistle. Um, obviously he's gone on to be a, a really good player for us but you kind of have to pinch yourself a little bit to consider where he was not too long ago and also the fact that he's been at Celtic for close to five years. When he was first signed he was loaned back to Inverness, he then spent a couple of different loan spells at Aberdeen, getting better, getting more experience, improving his maybe his physical aspects of the game, but even then he didn't seem quite ready to make the impact at Celtic until that famous Murrayfield game against Hearts came up. Half time he was brought on and it's fair to say from that point when he won the penalty and scored the goal, he's really not looked back. A couple of months later he scores the winner in the final against his old team Aberdeen and really as I say since then he hasn't looked back. He's turned into a brilliant player for us. 19 goals he scored in the first half of the season. Um, it's fair to say that tally would probably for the whole season would be around 30 if he hadn't had a couple of daft suspensions, a few injury troubles and of course the, the coronavirus outbreak to contend with. He's a brilliant player, he's probably our most important attacking player and if we bought him for 500,000 you probably wouldn't sell him for 30 times that at the moment. I'd certainly be looking for Celtic to reject any £15 million bids. I think you're looking for at least £20 million, maybe even more for Ryan Christie. He's a player that's proven he can do it at the European stage, domestically, um, international level as well. He scored goals for Scotland. He's just a brilliant player. And uh, one, of the, one of the rare things that Ronnie Dyler perhaps did right, perhaps that's a little bit harsh, but certainly uh, Ronnie Dyler deserves credit for bringing Christie in. I'm going to give Dyla a little bit more credit for another signing he made with Craig Gordon the year prior. We were badly in need of a goalkeeper after Fraser Forster had been moved on for £10 million to Southampton. We know that Gordon's no longer first choice, he's not even second choice, but it's fair to say that he's been a pretty good signing, especially as we got him on a free at the time. Um, he's done work with Stevie Woods, he's certainly come on um, to become a really important player, playing over 242 games for us over the years. He was a big part of the invincible season under Brendan Rodgers and those images of him celebrating on the Hamden turf after Tom Rogic's goal against Aberdeen, well, they'll be remembered for years and they'll be viewed for decades to come as, as Celtic fans reminisce about that glory season and Craig Gordon was a massive part of it. Into 2013 and that's when the wonder Virgil van Dijk came into our lives. John Park, the Celtic scout at the time, deserves huge credit. He deserves probably a knighthood for, for bringing Van Dyke into our lives, unearthing the gem who was playing for Eredivisie side Groningen at the time. Van Dyke's initial few weeks in Glasgow were a little bit slow and it 
people do seem to forget how awful he was in the 2-0 Champions League away defeat to Shakhtar Karagandy. But he then found a, a level that was too good for the Scottish game. I remember his big coming of age performance for me was against Dundee United, probably only a few weeks after that Karagandy game, and which shows how you know short-lived his blip was. And he just came on to be a brilliant game. And the truth is that he now plays the English Premier League like he did the Scottish game. He's far too good even for that level. He's probably the best centre back in the world and you know Celtic had a massive part in his development as a player. The crime really is that we only received 11.5 million for him from Southampton when he left. 2012, that's when Fraser Forster was signed permanently for £2 million from Newcastle United. He'd really enjoyed playing with Neil Lennon in his previous two loan spells at Celtic, the club. The fans loved him, his teammates loved him and he'd proven to be a really good player but when he signed things changed and he went on to an even better level. Of course the Barcelona games are the ones we all talk about but he had so many brilliant matches as well. Um, one of the best shot stoppers we've ever seen at the club and he proved to be a brilliant bit of business for £2 million. Perhaps a surprise that he never made it big in England. Yes, he did have a couple of good seasons at Southampton and he did go to the World Cup with England in 2014. But for the raw shot stopping ability he has, maybe a surprise that he never played for a top, top English team. Thankfully, he's back at Celtic now. Hopefully, we can re-sign him permanently this summer. And if we do so, it's fair to say that our 2020 bit of this video is sorted for future years because signing Forza this year is a signing that for me wouldn't be talked by anyone else. In terms of 2011, not too much debate about who was our best signing that summer. That was because the wonderful player that is Victor Wanyama arrived in that summer from Germinal Beershot in Belgium. I remember his debut when he played against Cardiff and it was only a friendly in Wales but he was bouncing off players, he big, he was strong, he was combative even in a friendly and I think Neil Lennon pretty much said the same uh, about his first training session that you could just tell this guy was a player. He soon went on to become a superstar like Forster, he made his name in the Barcelona game, of course scored the goal when we beat them but other than that his performance that night, mixing it against the likes of Xavi and Iesta, Alex Song in the midfield, he was just imperious that night. Um, funnily enough, recently he's now finding himself in Montreal Impact in America and he's been speaking about wanting to play for Celtic in the future. Basically just said that, that he, he has unfinished business at Celtic and that he hopes that he can play in the Green White Hoops at some point before he hangs up his boots. And I don't think you'd find too many Celtic fans who would disagree with that notion. And finally in 2010, a bit of a tough one in many ways, it was Neil Lennon's you know, rebuilding summer when he got the job full time and he would sign a few players that would go on to become stalwarts of his team over the next few years. You know, we're talking about the likes of Joe Ledley and Charlie Mulgrew, but the one we're going to go for is the goal scorer of that team, Gary Hooper. He cost 2.4 million from Scunthorpe United where he'd been banging the goals in. Not a massive club, but you know, the English Championship was still a decent level back then. And that was just before you could buy players for decent sums that we could afford. Nowadays Hooper would probably cost about an eight or nine million pounds um, given you know where he was banging the goals in even if it was for a team like Scunthorpe. But what he went on to do you know he may not be the, the technical ability of an Edward or Dembele but you can't argue with his goal return. Uh, he'd go on to score 82 goals in the hoops. He scored those in the Champions League, the Europa League, Cup Finals and of course a number of goals against Rangers as well. A brilliant Celtic player, not quite on the level as Ed of Eduardo Dembele as we say, but still a wonderful, wonderful guy to have at the club. Um, it's just a shame that he left so early and he was so keen to leave because he really would have made a, an even bigger name if he'd stayed for a few years. So there we go, that's our run over the last 10 summers. As you can hear from what we've just spoken about, loads and loads to be positive about. So just remember that if you're about to vent your frustration at some point this summer about us not making the move, Yes, I'm probably the most agitated about the fact that we maybe didn't sign a centre-back in the January window, but Celtic do have experience this summer of getting at least one player who goes on to be really good. You know, the names we've listed there, Van Dyke, Wanyama, Dembele, Hooper, a lot of really good signings there, and even ones like Christie who maybe took a little bit of time to get up to speed, but have certainly become top players now. That's us for another video. Massively appreciate the support as we say. Let us know what you thought of this video. Lots of agreement on the last video. Lots of disagreement as well, which is good because we all have an opinion. So let us know what you thought of the video, what you're, if you're enjoying our little videos we're doing from home. 
Um, at the moment, as I say, we're kind of putting sticking plasters and things because it's a bit tricky at the moment to get any sort of content done. Appreciate your views again. Let us know in the comments, as I say. If you've not yet subscribed, we'd really appreciate you doing that. Feel free to tell a pal as well. And we'll be back pretty soon with another video. Until then, take care.